In a world where local musicians and artists are unrated, underappreciated, unnoticed, battered, abused, and swept under the rug. Living show to show without secure benefits like medieval jesters. Run with the kittens. You're actually listening to it right now. I played a song for my hamster that just died. Like I said, I like Underplayed and underpaid. Real local music. Use what you have. All the canned rock stuff. And the canned rock stuff too. Chuck Wood around. We won't get into that. That was a good thing. Mondays at 6 p.m. What was special to me, really cool, amazing, incredible. Like, I need to rise up to this level. Phenomenal. Definitely incredible. Probably the coolest. Strong. You're a people Oh. <laughs> wow, you're killing me. I'll try not to swear. CFRU 93.5. Wow, the food was delicious. It had a smorgasbord of awesomeness. <laughs> so you're uh, your regular breakfast sausage. I also uh, ate some cocktail leaders and drank some melon liqueur one, one morning very early on the tour bus. Welcome to another installment of Underplayed and Underpaid. This is Brian McNeil with you as I am every week. And uh, well, i got a great show for you. But before we get into it, i got to let you know the format of the show is we like to promote uh, local talent or uh, talent that's breezing through the Guelph uh, area. Or, I mean, lately we've been doing the history of music in Guelph, so that's what we're going to cater to this evening. And uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to 93.3 CFRU, University of Guelph Community Campus Radio. I got Uncle Anus from the Toronto punk band Dirty Bird in the station with me today. He was supposed to be in last week, but something happened. But he's here today, so uh, I want to invite. I want. I want to say thank you very much to Uncle Anus for coming in. How do you do, sir? I'm doing real well. How are you, sir? I'm sorry I couldn't make it last week. Things happen in the punk rock world, as you know. But that's okay. Here we are to make up for it today. Well, I'm very well. Thank you for asking. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited about today's show. Um, I was able to drop one of the tracks off the CD that I bought off of you at the uh, Nasty Show. So big ups to Jim Hare. I also want to say uh, to Kim Bayarda, if you're listening, thanks for listening in. And uh, and also my buddy from the gym, you should be listening. And I'll talk to you about it next time I see you. Regardless, um, yeah, the format of the show, da, 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 da. if you want to get a hold of me, B-R-Y-A-N-C-F-R-U at gmail.com, I'll be happy to have you come in like I got uh, Uncle Anus in today. And like I've had, I mean, I've, over the past few weeks, I had um, Gord Depp from The Spoons. I had uh, uh, Roly Greenway from Crowbar in. I had the guys from Hourglass. Uh, I want to thank everybody and also uh, the new singer of um, Teenage Head. I had him in. So uh, Pete McCauley, thanks for coming out. And uh, yeah, History of Guelph Music. So, uh, Uncle Anis, you were born and raised in Kitchener, were you? Uh, actually, Brantford. Brantford. But I didn't live there very long. I lived in Elmira until I got into punk rock around the age of 14. And then I had to move up from the Mennonite crossroads and hit something a little bigger. Ended up in Kitchener-Waterloo and working at the only clubs that catered to punk rock back then in the day. And hmm. then had to move up to toronto and a little bigger every time that's cool so um so you you left elmira which is still to this day fairly small community um what was it like moving from uh, elmira and getting and hanging out in kitchener it was a definite big change from horse and buggies uh going down the main roads to hanging out with quite a big scene of punk rocks back in the early 80s in kitchener waterloo there was in a lot of the cities, Guelph had a lot had a really big scene back in the day, and it was it was a huge d- change. It was uh, a lot of fun and excitement for a young kid. Cool. Uh, okay. Well, you mentioned that Guelph had quite the scene. Do you mean the music scene in the early '80s was was you know well in, uh, in developed, or are you referring specifically to punk music? Uh, I think the music scene in general, but I, I was referring to the punk scene itself. There okay. were quite a quite a large amount of shows going on uh, here at the university and at different hotels and venues in downtown Guelph. And it's been uh, it's been had its ups and downs, but I remember seeing some pretty big bands come through Guelph quite regularly in the past. And there were a lot of the small bands that were from here. It, made it quite quite well for a while and cool do you remember any names of any of these uh, local guelph bands uh i remember not way back but there was uh the disgruntled postal workers were 
a band that were doing a lot of booking uh, throughout the 90s here, downtown Guelph. Uh, I remember seeing a lot of bands at the university here all played here before, which was a combination of superstar punk musicians from the other American bands. And uh, pretty much anybody who was anybody back then came through Guelph and from all the surrounding areas, whether it was the Forgotten Rebels or whether it was uh, the Dick Van Dykes from London, uh, Problem Children, uh, a lot of Kitchener bands, the Nun Fingers, and... <laughs> That's an awesome, you caught yourself, that was awesome. Drips Under Pressure, uh, Public <laughs> Outrage. Of course, all the Toronto bands were hitting all the small towns as well, so it was a pretty thriving scene. Cool. Uh, did the Nasties pop up back in the 90s, or did, are they more of a recent band? Uh, I, I think they're from around the night. I mean, definitely the, the singer's been around in a lot of... Nate's been around yeah. in a lot of other bands. And, uh, Shouts out to the Speakeasies. Yes. And uh, I think all, all, the, all the guys in the bands have been in previous bands before. Mm. Cool. Um, so... The Kitchener scene, you told me an interesting story as we were at the uh, Nasty Show. The first time I met you, actually, you were telling me about um, you know being basically the first guy with a mohawk. Do you want to share that story, or do you want to pass over that one? Uh, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Oh, you're talking about. about being the first guy and uh, you know walking around uh, downtown Kitchener with a mohawk. And, well, uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was the first guy walking one of the, downtown, okay. but yeah, it was, it was a pretty crazy scene back then. Um, I remember being like just 15 years old and had my mohawk up for the first time and walking downtown King Street thinking I was all that. And next thing I knew, there was a group of five or six fully, fully grown 30s, early 40s, heavy duty, tattooed, rough guys come out of one of the strip clubs there and just started pounding the crap out of me. And I was like... It, it totally made me feel completely crazy to think about, you know, have, being gang beat up by grown adults because of a haircut on a 16-year-old kid, 15-year-old kid. And so, yeah, I kind of went a little crazy, I guess, back then and went went back for retribution. And I did end up getting the crap beat out of me a second time for for what I was doing, but afterwards there was a lot, a lot different respect that you'd be given back then, you know, mm -hmm. just, and, and Kitchener, Kitchener downtown has totally changed too. I mean, there was, there was, uh, some cool punk clubs that were downtown there, Scorpios and the back door and, um, the punks pretty much hung out in a, in a back alleyway that was, uh, that was place called uh steve's everybody called it but i think it was called doug's or something like that and <laughs> nobody went into that back alleyway because there was always at least 50 to 100 punks skinheads mods i mean it was such a small scene back there just to be safe from all these rednecks and people that just didn't understand what was going on and and wanted to like wanted to confront it with violence and so in order to to exist and to and and to not get the crap beat out of you every single day walking down the street it was such a small scene that as long as you weren't racist or anything like that then pretty much everybody with good morals punks and skins and mods everybody had to hang out with each other all at the same time and it was pretty crazy there was uh, a lot of good good clubs going on. I remember being uh, working at one Phil's grandson's place, which I don't think is anything to do with punk rock anymore. It's, uh, but it it was always geared towards the two universities there. But there was a lot of punk bands that they catered to going through there, and I remember Daigle Abortions coming through there, and I was cooking their stir fries, working at the club, and I loved their music all along and they looked at me and they were like you're the only guy in here with a big mohawk and you you're totally do you know where london is man and i'm like yeah there's a, and they were like oh well 
take us take us to London. And I'm like, well, this is how I drink. I work here, and this is how I get my drinks every day. And they're like, we'll give you all the drinks you can drink. Just come with us and show us where London is. And that's how I met them back in like 85 or 86 or something like that and went on tour with them quit my job right there and wow got right into hanging out with the day glows and being on tour and seeing what it was like to be in a band and wasn't too long afterwards that i decided i needed to do the same thing and if they could do it i i figured i could do the same thing and that was the beginning of me and my part of music around the ontario scene at least that's great um so, uh, your definition of punk music, can you want to just lay that right out there for the listeners? Uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, punk rock's been around, as far as I'm concerned, since the beginning of music. And, and especially, there was a lot of underground garage bands in, that could have been labeled punk rock in the 50s and 60s. But to me, it was, it was mid-70s. There were a lot of people that just wanted to play music and bang out great songs and and everywhere they tried to try to promote themselves within the music industry they were being shunned and denied simply because they were, simply because they weren't some kind of virtuoso mozart or somebody who had studied for years and years and had all lots of of proof of diplomas from schools and it was crazy, unless you were like a big arena band and like The Who or somebody like that, who's a great band, but you know, you don't have to be great musicians like that to write great songs. There's lots of people that are just learning to play their instruments that are writing great songs and not getting any exposure. So that's what punk is to me. Musically, it was just a bunch of people that said, you know what, I'm not going to listen to the music industry telling me what to do, and I don't care if I'm not playing big-time arenas, but I'm just going to write music, and I'm just going to write good songs, and I'm going to get it out there on my own and do whatever I have to to do it. And uh, so lyrically, your own material, especially your early material, what was it centered around? What was the uh, the general, uh, I guess you could say, concept of uh, what you were writing about? Um, I think, it, I mean, with any musician you, or, or poet or writer or artist, I mean, as, as you grow and learn new things, your ideas will always change into new things. And um, I think my lyrics have always been about what I see in life and, and what's going on in the world around me. And and I I try never to be overly political um but at the same time as a frustrated young young guy with a lot of uh vinegar i guess you could say i i had quite a quite a few songs that were about the government and about uh the police and and their abuse of authority and about nazis and about street life and things that you just see in the basic world around you as as you're out and about in the world. Mm-hmm. When you mentioned earlier uh, skinheads, what type of skinheads are you, you referring to? Are you simply talking about people who shave their heads, or do you mean the racially motivated? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that I did, I did mention that to be part of that core group of of uh, individuals all coming together to to stay safe, whether it was punks or skinheads or mods or freaks or whatever you wanted to call yourself back in in those days um but no no nazis uh no racially oriented people um there were you know obviously a few people that have had uh rough times growing up whether it was from their families or or whatever has happened to scar them uh, psychologically and so there were some some crazy people around the scene back then but at the same time nobody wanted anyone else who remotely looked like yourself in the eyes of the general public running around and and acting or or talking in a certain way whether it be racial or or anything like that um you don't want the rest of the world to think that 
you're what that is because that's what they've met before. So nobody really wanted that kind of influence around the scenes that I was in. And, and anytime there were groups like that, we always confronted them as best we could. Right on. All right, well, how about we uh, how about we drop a song? Would you like to do that? I'd love to drop a song. Can can we drop a song off of the uh, the vinyl you brought? Sure. How about the first song? Whatever you like. All right. Well, that's the first song I noticed is called "Drunk Again." Do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about putting that song together before we get into it? Um, well, that song in particular, that's uh, actually our our first singer of the band. Before I was singing, I used to play guitar in the band. Oh, okay. And that's actually. Uh, Chachi Joshua Thornton singing and um, Dirty Birds always had the concept that uh, it doesn't matter uh, how great of musicians you are and if you can pack the club or not um, unless you're an arena band you're playing in the clubs you're playing in the bars and you're out to sell drinks if the bar is not doing well and selling drinks then they're probably not going to want to have you back no matter how many people you pack the place with mm. or how good you are so we learned as a band at an early age it, if we wanted to have any success uh, we had to focus around our drinking and we did a lot of drinking throughout the years of the band and uh, when you focus the band around drinking and make the songs fun and have a lot to do with uh, drinking then you're selling a lot of drinks as well as entertaining a lot of people and having a lot of fun and getting your ideas and morals out there and your art and basically um, you're being asked to come back because you're selling a lot of drinks for the bars well, there you go. There you have it from Uncle Anus of the band Dirty Bird, who played guitar on this record. But we'll get into some more stuff in a little bit. So here's the song Drunk Again off of the album. Uh, it's uh, Split with Ulcer. Ah, cool. All right. Well, here you go. And on, on 93.3 University of Guelph Community Campus Radio CFRU. Freaking A. in the station with Brian and Uncle Anus. Uncle Anus is from the band Dirty Bird, if you are just joining us right now at 93.3 CFRU, or if you're catching us on CFRU.ca. Thank you very much for joining in, and uh, yeah, the history of punk music in the Tri-City, Guelph, Southern Ontario, that's what we got Uncle Anus in here for. And uh, so we've gone through Kitchener, uh, we haven't touched base with Cambridge or Waterloo, really. Would you like to talk about those before we get to Guelph? Uh, well, I, I think I did mention a little bit about Waterloo. I think, yeah, a little bit. With the Phil's grandsons used to have a lot of bands going through there, which I'm, I'm pretty sure they don't cater to that anymore. Um, but the same owner of that, I mean, there was shows at the University of Waterloo going on at the time. There was, uh, I, I think in the early, late 80s, early 90s, at least, there was... Uh, 
the University of Waterloo was known as, as one of the schools with the most alternative um, lifestyle kids going there or something like that. You never know what they label, uh, what they don't understand in in a lot of places. But, you know, everybody's just trying to figure everybody out back then. And um, But the guy that was uh, Roger Crane that owned Phil's grandson's place also owned the Albion Hotel here in Guelph. I'm not sure if he still owns it or not. Oh, but if, there was If anybody happens to know, why don't you let us know uh, on the underplayed and underpaid Facebook page. That way we can uh, have solidarity. With the understanding, before the end of the show, carry on, sorry. No problem at all. Um, there there was a lot of shows that were going on there at the Albion Hotel. I remember seeing uh, Montreal bands My Dog Popper play there, uh, and and I've Day Glows and Dirty Birds played there in the past. There's been uh, a lot of bands go through there. Hard, hard to remember after so many years of so many bands if if i saw which bands at which clubs i remember a few distinct ones stick out um for quite a few years uh the club that's now called vinyl was the trashateria mm-hmm. and there were a lot of bands that were playing uh from all over the place large and small that that played the stage there at the trashateria the stage is still there at the vinyl mm-hmm. that all the bands played at it'd be nice to see uh more bands possibly start going through that place as well because um i'm sure they're doing well with their their dance and disco stuff but it's uh it's a great stage and it's a decent sound in there in fact gain music and a couple i believe badlands music uh, dylan dawson and nick weaver two two different companies but uh they have been throwing a lot of shows actually at the vinyl skynet's played there uh more more metal oriented uh, shows who else has played there uh, well die mannequin played there not long ago etc so they do still have shows there they usually have to close it down by 11 so that they can open up the club right yeah yeah sorry to cut you off there. no that's good to know um i'm i'm totally always trying to keep up to date with it, all the different scenes mm-hmm. uh it's it's you know one thing i've noticed too through all the, the years of touring and and being in different uh scenes as i progress through through life and moving around um a scene can be as as close as 10 or 15 minutes apart from another scene and there's always a different vibe from city to city and and every year you know there. I'm always being asked, do you think that there's a lot less punk and now finally it's dying because, you know, it's been quoted that for years from like right from the end of the 70s and, you know, punk is dead or is punk dead because such and such an event has happened and punk's always been something that, that has just always been evolving and changing and and there's so many different offshoots of and separations of punk and so many uh groups that are uniting and as as close as 10 to 15 minutes away from one scene to the next we'll play one club and when we get there there'll be like 500 kids all partying and waiting to see the band and by the time we get on stage there's like 15 or 18 kids left to watch you play and you're like what happened here and everybody either got too drunk and kicked out or or thrown out of the club or they were fighting or they got arrested outside of the club and it's just crazy 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 fun and 10 15 minutes down the road you'll get the same maybe three to four hundred kids and all of these guys are all not drinking and and they're all straight edge and and they're into getting together and organizing how they can how they can help the 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 world as they see it around them one way or another whether it be through through building or through tearing down there's there's always ways and they're always trying to get together and and it's all these peaceful forms of of feasible ideas of anarchy and and how how it could work and how they can live in more of a community based uh society and 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 it's just crazy because it's it's so close down the road from each other and so see both scenes are almost like the yin and yang of punk and the 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 black and white and you just you never know what you're going to get from scene to scene until you travel around and see so 
one of the best things which is really great about southern ontario here southern central on ontario there's so many scenes jam-packed close to each other i mean once you get outside of ontario it's a long way to winnipeg uh, without you know maybe thunder bay and going the other way past montreal it starts getting bleak and bleaker and bleaker you get to nova scotia and we always say all roads lead through Truro because it's like a pinwheel where you go out one highway and come back to Truro and then out the next and back and you just play like a pinwheel before you keep going east. And South Central Ontario from here over to Montreal, there's probably 50 really great scenes in, in all different cities and they all have their local bands and they all have their touring bands and they all have a different flavor to to the scene and i think everybody should get out and see what what their next door neighbors are doing and mm -hmm. have a little bit of fun and find out what's going on because there's a lot of things going on right next door to you that you may not know that you may really uh, really like and connect with cool uh, would you like to play something uh, off of this new album and tell a little, a little bit about this album, Seeks? Seeks. This is a really fun concept. Um, every now and then they put an advertisement for bands in the Now magazine, which is a, a weekly entertainment um, freebie magazine in Toronto. And um, so when they put an ad, when they put a, a special on having the ads for the musicians wanted section, and it's like 20 bucks and you get four issues. And anybody who's in the music scene around the Toronto area or who has access to this magazine, musicians tend to gravitate towards that particular section of the magazine, the help help wanted musicians wanted section uh, either looking for a job or looking for what they think is a job but it's really just playing in a band <laughs> so we what we did was we put an ad in that say, stated dirty bird seeks vocals guitar bass drums ability to play not essential must drink have gear a van a rehearsal space with a pa no jobbers in other words you're not going to get paid and we simply left a name called malacca and left my phone number there and i left the answering machine messages on so i i That's thought fun. <laughs> i didn't i didn't think i'd get very many calls if any i figured everybody would read it and know us and know it was a joke and just some free advertising for the band but keep the name in everyone's face but uh turned out i got about a hundred different calls from serious people looking to play in the band and didn't realize it was a joke <laughs> so I, I took a whole bunch of the best ones of those and put them all together and and put it over top of some music that that we had that we were writing and kicking around in the studio and kind of just did it ad lib and decided to call the cd seeks from the title of the uh advertisement dirty bird seeks and uh, as a bonus track at the end of the CD, you get to hear the best of all of these phone calls and stuff. And they were very entertaining. I mean, you, you bleeped out almost every name, almost every name, which is kind of fun, too. Almost. Uh, yeah, yeah. And a, f a real fun thing about this CD, too, is um, as, as, you, as you progress as, as a band, um, you, you like to think that you're learning a little bit more each time you put out another CD. And we are very proud of this new CD, the sound quality, uh, the presentation, the whole idea and concept. This is really um, kind of a culmination of, of all of our years of effort and learning and trying to be the best we can so everybody has a lot of fun and, and continues to enjoy it when they come out to see us. Oh, it's an awesome album. It sounds great. It's yeah, got a lot of really wicked songs on it. Uh, which, which song would you like to play? Uh, Give me a number, and then explain what the song's about. Why not? Let's play Kill the Boss Man, which is actually a remake of an old Dirty Bird song, which is uh, it's all about those people that go to work 9 to 5 and just can't stand their boss. <laughs> and if they could ever have a dream come true, this song would be that dream. See what I'm talking about? All right, here's Kill the Boss Band by Dirty Burns off the album Seek. This is underplayed and underpaid, and uh, enjoy. Enjoy. 
One day, someone like me is gonna kill you. That was Kill the Boss Man by Dirty Bird. Off the album Seeks, we got Uncle Anus in the station today on Underplayed and Underpaid here at the CFRU studios. And uh, we've been talking about the history of punk music, so if you missed it, you can always check the archive at CFRU.ca. And, um, yeah, so um, this album, it's great, and I love the artwork. Um, you were mentioning to me uh, that the corpse on the front is a real corpse. The skull is plastic, but the corpse is a real corpse. Um, some neighbors of our jam place, uh, downtown Toronto, good friends and awesome special effects artists from Ghost uh, FX actually uh, acquired quite a few different props from around the area. And um, I've been friends for quite a long time with some uh, art collectors in downtown Toronto, Bill Jameson, who unfortunately passed away recently. And so we always had access to kind of the weird and creepy uh, parts of life or <laughs> death, as you want to have it, cause Egyptian sarcophaguses and weird weaponry from Kaapo tribe in South Africa, uh, South America that uh, are a cannibalistic tribe and and you know i've i've got like lip discs and body modification um artifacts from native tribes of people from uh unfortunately friends that have passed away but from friends who i met through the dark and strange underworld of downtown toronto late night uh, so anyways we got this corpse that we borrowed and we made this awesome video to go with one of the songs on the cd it's it's um the song's called still drunk if you want to look up on youtube or anything like that and check it out it's uh type in dirty bird and still drunk and it should come up there's also lots of other links you'll find through there from live uh shows as well as a couple other videos we did we did a, a trooper tribute compilation with a bunch of punk bands from across canada and some down into the states lots of really great bands it was actually as far as compilations go and for me to like more than four or five songs on a compilation is usually pretty good and i i liked half of this cd uh we did boys in the bright white sports car and became close close uh band friends with Ray McGuire and the Trooper Boys and um, 
Yeah, so we did a video for this this still drunk uh, song for on the Seeks CD, which is on YouTube, and uh, we kind of wanted to incorporate a little bit of the old school uh, videos, Black Flag kind of TV party tonight, and so we had lots of drinking and lots of beer splashing around all over the place, and we also trying to play a little bit of tribute to early metal bands from Montreal like Voivod and their kind of black and white kind of strobe light videos you used to see on much music way back in the early early heavy days when they actually had music on the music channels and not just some stupid TV show that yeah you know it's a music channel why don't why isn't there music anymore well it used to be and uh, I'll give you a link that I played at the end of a show a few weeks ago uh, that explains all about that from the department head at MTV so I'll, I'll share that with you uh, afterwards but um, so how how can people get a hold of this album it's a great album by the way you really should get it if you're into the music this this album has is is not really out at record shops yeah we've always kind of pushed things ourselves diy and and we decided that if you wanted to get this um the hard copies you you are very special and we're keeping them limited at five thousand for now and you have to get them from one of the bandmates. If you're listening in and you would like to get uh, this CD or any other merchandise, you can email me directly at Dear Dirty Bird, just like you're writing a letter, D-E-A-R, Dirty Bird, at Hotmail.com. Hotmail's been around long enough. It's a basic, hopefully nobody can forget an email like that, is Dear Dirty Bird at Hotmail.com. Um, you can always find the band's website at dirtybird.org. And yes, we're an organization. You do not want to bleep with us. <laughs> and also, if uh, you want to come out to a nasty show, that's where I've seen you the last few times. Yeah, I've been hanging out with those boys a lot lately. They've been really great to me, Jim Jim, and, and Nate and, and Warren and uh, Mike. I'm, Mike, I'm so bad with names. Sorry, Mike. I'm all and when I met you, I told you I'm bad with names, but I never forget a face or a circumstance or a conversation. So don't test me. If you <laughs> if you ever try, don't test me because I got a great memory, just no names. I did the same thing last week with a gentleman who I had on the show from Wakeless. Sorry, Craig. I apologize. So big shouts out to uh to Derek and uh, and Colin and Craig. And Brent, that's everybody in Wakeless, so and you, men you mentioned you had the guy from the Spoons on here the other yeah, week. Yeah, Gord Depp was on, uh, not last week, but the week before. That was pretty cool. I was hoping to have uh, Sandy Horn come in also, but uh, we did a phone interview. It was my first phone interview. That was pretty fun. Nice. The guy, the Spoons actually recorded at the same uh, place that we recorded our latest CD at, and that's Harlow Sound. Um, it, the sound guy that did our CD... He's not going to be available to work with anybody. He's got a great job working at Rockstar Toronto. Uh, great shout out to Steve Knuckles Donahue. He uh, he's not working with bands anymore. He got smart and he's working doing all the audio that you hear on all the video games for Rockstar Toronto. Oh, great. Um, I was actually lucky enough through being friends with him i i did some voiceovers on an old video game that was around a few years ago the warriors based after the warriors uh movie from back in the 70s and huh. it was a fun game kind of running around tagging things and beating the crap out of people and i got to say a few explosives and a <laughs> little bit of oh you got me oh <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> right on. Well, you got the voice for it, uh, and for obviously the punk music. How about we drop into the track, and then I got to do some public service announcements. Then we'll get into a little bit what's going on at MusicLives.ca. If you want to know what's going on in Guelph, you got to go to MusicLives.ca. Beat me to the punch. Check out the events page. You'll see everything all lined up for what's going on over the next week that I'm gonna wrap off. So, do you don't mind? If I put on um, my favorite song off the album, One Girl in the Pit. You put on whichever song you want. All right, now writing, Thank you for having me. Writing that song, is that from experience of, yeah, that girl, the good-looking 
chick in the pit. There's one in every scene. Yeah. There's one in every scene. And I've always had an eye for the, the, the girls that have a little bit of sand to them. And uh, there's always that one girl in the pit that defies all the guys and she doesn't care how crazy it goes she's gonna go twice as crazy as any of the guys right from the beginning of the show and she doesn't give a rat's crap about what anybody thinks or or what anybody does she loves the band she's there she's dancing and then when all the guys start getting gassed and start slowing down and move into the outsides and they're not dancing as hard that's when she starts grabbing all her friends by the arms and dragging them into the pit and going come on girls i doused all these guys <laughs> Now the pit is ours. Right on. All right. So here's one girl in the pit by the band Dirty Bird off the album Seeks. And uh, if you want to know how to get a hold of the guys, well, go archive the show at cfru.ca. Here we go. Be oh, back in yeah. a couple. Oh, yeah. Dirty Bird with the song One Girl in the Pit off the album Seeks. And if you want to get a hold of Dirty Bird, you email them directly at DearDirtyBird at Hotmail.com. That's DearDirtyBird, all one word, the regular way you spell Dear, Dirty, and Bird. So there you go. Um, awesome. And also, you can probably catch them if you come out to the next Nasty Show, which I will be talking about. Oh, I was supposed to do some PSAs. All right. DirtyBird.org. That's right. DirtyBird.org. YouTube, type in Dirty Bird, but type in Still Drunk or something like that, like the song you're looking for, because it's hard to compete with millions of NFL fans with somebody doing a stupid end zone dance. You're right. You're absolutely right. All right. Here's some PSAs. We'll be back in a couple. Stay tuned. Now we're back. Underplayed and Underpaid is the name of the show. 93.3 is the airwave. And CFRU.ca is... Uh, how you can check us out online. There's always the archive. You can go to the Underplayed and Underpaid Facebook page, check the note at the top of the page, and cross-reference the dates at CFRU.ca of all the different uh, guests that I've had on the show. Of course, Uncle Anus from Dirty Bird. Will Which be the is also the, the epitome of the lifestyle of Underplayed and Underpaid. It absolutely would be, wouldn't it? Except for, you know, some of the bands that we've had on that are totally doing fine. But uh, we're, we're just happy 
Happy to have anybody on the show. Well, this is a fun show to do because we're able to play some of the songs that are not regular radio playable, which we don't get very much regular radio play, but we, we have on different specific shows on the larger uh, stations like the Punkorama shows and stuff. Um, but they try to stay away from some of the more hardcore lyrics. Yeah, and probably try to play the stuff with the uh uh with the easy uh, listening the, the bad language after if there is PM. any easy listening dirty bird well i mean pff, uh, half half of the the silly stuff that you hear on the uh, the average pop stations is not easy to listen to to begin with so what is easy listening right all right so here's what we got going on musiclives.ca when you go there you click on the events page and here's the event listing coming up for the next week so there's our show and then uh paul mcleod is at van gogh's ear this evening he's a wonderful awesome dude so so talented also, he's a buddy, so uh, make sure you check out Paul McLeod. If you're looking for something to do tonight, it's really the only thing to do. Um, Except watching the Leafs play Boston for Game 7. Go, Leafs, course. go. But we're talking about music in Guelph, and that doesn't start till 11 or 12-ish, you know, Paul. Well, if you Puck drops in 20 minutes. It 10, does. 10 minutes. <laughs> Oh, there's Mo Coffee. Um, and uh, on the 14th, that's tomorrow, Maddie P is at Doogie's in Guelph. On the 15th, Music Lives hosts Name That Tune at Van Gogh's Ear. Everything from the Jimmy Jazz is over at Van Gogh's Ear as they're doing renovations. Wink, nudge. So, uh, yeah, make sure you check that out <laughs> if you like uh, music trivia and winning stuff. Uh, on the 16th, that's Thursday, Fortnite Music hosts Blimp Rock CD tape release and Kelly McMichael. And the gloss at Ebar. So check that out. And you can also click on any of these links and all the information comes up as to start times, end times, and um, cover, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Mike something is at Doogies in Guelph also on Thursday, uh, on the 17th, which is Friday, or Savannah at Van Gogh's Ear, and also Game Music and Chronic Noise hosts American Hell, Anu Beginning, Something You Whisper, and Unbowed at Red Papaya in Guelph. That's going to be a great time. Um, I was hoping to get tickets for that, but could you make it. it sound even better? So I think a lot of people should go. They should go. Everybody should be there. I'll try to get you tickets too. Um, the 18th of Saturday, Fortnite Music hosts Hoodie Good with Brendan Herman and the, er, at, sorry, at the Cornerstone, not and the Cornerstone. Also on the 18th, Game Music and Kickstand Productions hosts Lamb Become Lions and Black Rhino Riot and more at the ANAF Club. And also Sunday, the 19th, Dave Huber and friends are at Doogies in Guelph. I believe that's an open stage or a request kind of thing. And what I consider the, Official Guelph Open Stage. Nate Coles hosts Open Stage at Van Gogh's Ear. He was awesome last night, as he is every Sunday. So, uh, yeah, there's what's going on at musiclives.ca. And you can check out all the uh, further things going on in the further future, which I'll be talking about next Monday. So uh, there you go. If you're in a band, if you're a comedian, even singer-songwriter, make sure you put a band profile up at musiclives.ca. And uh, it just helps every, anybody who's looking to book bands in or from Guelph. It's all there for you, and big ups to, sorry, respect and shouts to uh, to Aaron Dale for putting it all together, and everybody who does the blogs and all the really cool stuff. I mean, yeah. So there you go. That's what's going on Musical Dossier. Do you want to add anything? I just wanted to say, Brian, you must really love what you do because you have such a great voice on air, and you have such a great show on the go. Um, I'm pretty sure you could be doing... Uh, a lot larger shows, paid shows. So I can obviously tell through passion you love what you do, and I hope all your listeners appreciate uh, what you're doing because you're doing a really great job here keeping the music scene going around the University of Guelph and the Tri-Cities. Well, thank you very much, Uncle Anus. That was uh, very heartfelt, nice, and thank you very much. Uh, I, I do enjoy the show. I've been doing it for two years now, and I've, uh, you know, help, helping the music scene. I mean, I'm not a great musician by any standards but uh but that's punk okay that's punk there you go well uh we're kind of wrapping up here we got two minutes before i play my outro what's up mo coffee and um so did you want to talk about anything or want me to play something or we got two minutes under two minutes now under two minutes under two minutes play snack bar number seven seven all right here we go snack bar Woo! You'll find our snack bar chock full of good things to eat, tasty, tempting, thirst-quenching, fresh, crunchy. So visit the snack bar now. Why want it in the morning and I want it in the night? Want to do it 
Snippet from the song Snack Bar off the album Seeks by the band Dirty Bird. And I've had Uncle Anus in here as a guest. Thank you very much for coming in. And, uh, yeah, it's it's been a gas, man. Thank you very much. Uh, it's not been that bad smelling in here. <laughs> but I've had a lot of fun. And I hope whoever's listening out there has had a lot of fun, too. And shoot me an email, deardirtybird at hotmail.com. And let me know uh, what you thought of the show. And... Uh, Keep tuning in and telling all your friends to tune in. Yeah, there you go. So I'll see you next week from Underplayed and Underpaid and everybody at CFRU Station. Thanks for listening. I got no time for the human race. Everybody fighting all over the place. Why don't we grab a bottle and head up town? Baby, won't you be my girl? I trade my old six shooter for a diamond ring. Take you all the places that you've never been. We'll make a right at the border and just get lost. Baby, won't you be my girl? I ain't got no time for feeling lonely. I got the whole town, baby, on a little old string Come on know tonight and you can be my thing I trade my old six-shooter for a diamond ring Take you all the places that you've never been We'll make a right at the border and just get lost Baby, won't you be my girl? For being lonely I got the whole town, baby On a little old string Come and know tonight And you can be my thing Well, I got no time For the human race Everybody fighting all over the place Why don't we grab a bottle And head up town Baby, won't you be my girl Baby, won't you be my girl Baby, won't you be my girl